Director at Miles Franklin. Andy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. All ready to go. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss about Brexit. Now, you've been talking about that this is the most important election in history. Did you want to discuss a little bit about this? Sure. Actually, the article you're referring to is was called The Most Important and Precious Metal Bullish Election in History. And the reason being that with, you know, the state of the global economy as bad as it is to start with, uh, it was my belief and probably many others believe that uh, that F Britain actually broke through all the market manipulation and propaganda, which frankly put the pre-Swiss gold referendum propaganda and market manipulation from two years ago to shame that it would cause, uh, you know, it would accelerate the cascade of, uh, of social unrest and political revolution around the world. And, you know, sure enough, it has, because within mere days, not only has the, the, the impact on the financial markets, particularly the currencies, everyone's focused on stock markets, and I'm focused more on the currency crashes uh, that are going on right now. As a result, you're seeing an exodus of, uh, of nations lining up to get out of the European Union, which they should. The European Union has probably been the most destructive political entity since, uh, since you know, communist U USSR back in the 70s. And uh, I think it's going to, um, I think it's going to come apart a lot quicker than anyone can imagine. I've said all along the European Union, or more importantly, I focus more on the euro currency. I thought it was a doomed to fail, um, ill-begotten, Ill, um, you know, experiment in the first place. And it's only 15 years old. And I think, I don't think we'll have a euro, maybe even as soon as a year from now. If we do, it'll be a completely different euro because countries are going to be leaving. They're going to be kicked out. And uh, I think it's only a matter of time uh, before, frankly, I think it just takes one more of such referendums to completely end any hope that the European Union may even, you know, try to, to get together. I think it's going to expand rather violently. Now, there is talk about the potential of the Brexit actually being stopped. You know, the, the people voted on it, but there's a petition to do a revote. What is your perspective on the efforts right now to stop a Brexit? Well, actually, that petition was already found out to be a fraud, but it doesn't matter. I mean, there, there, no, there is going, listen to me, everyone. There will be no revote. There is no turning back. There, is, there won't even be, you won't even find at any point, any time this year, a single shred of hope. There won't even be a fake news story, you know, to try to get gold down or something uh, that says, whoa, maybe there is hope after all. There is no hope. There, the European, the, Britain is gone. There is gone, gone, gone as can be. You're going to see political chaos in Europe now as they try to figure out who runs who runs the UK, let alone, uh, you know, you know how it gets divorced from the EU. And uh, no, there's going to be no there's no turning around. This ball is rolling downhill faster and faster with each passing minute. And remember, with each day that the that the, uh, the, the stocks of the world get worse, where you see the, the banks falling apart and bailouts and discussing uh, further central bank actions, it's only going to push us further further away and make the uh, the European Union hope be so far in the rearview mirror that no one's even going to recognize it. No, right now, this is this is all going to be about damage control on an individual nation basis, every man for himself, uh, every political party for himself, uh, you know, and, and, you know, for instance, you, know, you talk about how much that we talked about before this call, this was the biggest loss in powers that be history. And, you know, for instance, so badly, the you know, the powers that be want Hillary Clinton to win because she's establishment. Well, guess what? She lost. She can literally go home right now because this is going to be a landslide for Trump. It probably would have been already. But after the Brexit, again, it's fueling. It's fueling the anti big government fears. It's fueling anti establishmentism. And I think around the world, you're going to see a year and, and maybe many years of, uh, of chaos. I mean, hopefully controlled chaos. But there's, there's going to be, there won't be any ability for, for major nations to do anything together that's credible. I was saying on my podcast this morning, I mean, they could come out uh, this weekend and say all the central banks in the world have combined their efforts like the superheroes, the super friends. And we're going to do the biggest QE of all time. And we are committed to all do this together. And still, I think it would fall on deaf ears because right now, central bank credibility is dead. Big government establishment uh, credibility is dead and right now it's just going to be an every man for himself uh, for years to come. Now you mentioned at the beginning how Brexit is basically one of the most bullish things that has happened for precious metals 
Did you want to discuss a little bit more about this, why Brexit is so bullish for precious metals? Well, look, it's really more about uh, central banks in general. I mean, their credibility was already uh, was already on death's door. I mean, what Janet Yellen, you know, the government pulled their May, uh, pretending that they're going to raise rates, which, again, I can't emphasize enough. They never said they were going to raise rates. All they did was say what they always say. Yeah, the economy uh, supports such a the move. We'll do it. But it, of course, didn't. Uh, it, it didn't support a move. And even when they put out the minutes, uh, the economy had already been much worse than when the initial minutes were said. So it was kind of a joke. To me, it was all about trying to extricate the commercials from the record high naked short gold and silver short positions that they had uh, that they had accrued in the COMEX this year. It miserably failed because not only are those short positions, uh, they didn't cover them, but they actually went to new record highs before the Brexit even occurred. So my guess is on Friday when you find out the amount of shorting they had to do just in the past two or three days uh, to prevent gold from going to 1400 instead of 1300 you know, it's only going to shine a light on them further. So again, you know, it's all, the only reason gold and silver have been down, as we know, all these years is paper naked shorting and, of course, dishoarding whatever, uh, whatever actual inventories like at Fort Knox still exist. And I think right now those inventories are pretty much gone. And right now the naked shorting is at the end of its rope because everyone sees it for what it is. They're, you know, they have these record of short positions and it doesn't even hold the price down anymore. So I think, uh, I think that the, the fear, I mean, the fear of fiat currencies that Brexit's bringing on, starting with the potential breakup of the European Union. I mean, look at, look at the, the, I mean, Great Britain, they'll probably benefit from this more than anyone. The pound is down, what, 15% in the last two days? Uh, and it's not even, it barely has blipped up from its low today. So the euro has collapsed. Uh, pretty much everything has collapsed, uh, as they have been for years, as I predicted they would, except the yen, which is going up because it was the, quote, funding currency of the carry trade. And that hurts, hurts, you know, everybody that hurts Wall Street more than any of the other currency moves because they're all short the yen and now it's rising. So, again, you know, it's a perfect storm. It's been a perfect storm for years. It was just waiting for a catalyzing event. This was the perfect one, but it's not even just an economic one now because now you have the political ramifications as everyone worries about what the new political world is going to look like. Now, you're saying that this will be the end of the euro. How do you see this affecting other currencies around the world? I know in an article you wrote, you said that this not only marks the commencement of the end game for the EU uh, and the euro, but the end game for all global currencies. Did you want to talk about this? Yeah, I mean, this is this is what we've been talking about for years. I mean, all fiat currency regimes are Ponzi schemes that collapse. We've had almost a thousand of them throughout time, and they've all collapsed. We've never before had one where every single currency at the same time uh, was was tethered to it. And and of course, we're we've now been at this stage for for forty something years. So the debts that have been accumulated worldwide as a result of all of these years of money printing, not to mention the financial engineering and derivatives that they've invented to leverage all of the money printing, has put us uh, way past the point in our return. So to hit, so, the, so before the Brexit, pretty much every currency in the world was at, near, or in some cases way below its all-time low valuation before the Brexit. Since the Brexit, it's gotten dramatically worse. That was only two or three days ago. We're talking about cataclysmic plunges in currencies around the world, the gold price, I would say on average, on average is now at an all time high at, you know, if you if you average all the 180 currencies around the world, even the, the British pound as of yesterday was, I think British pound gold was about 12% from its all time high and the euro, maybe 14%, a whole bunch. Rupee gold was only a handful of percent from its all time gold. Those are the biggest gold buyers in the world. And believe me, they know they notice this. Uh, the, the yuan is being devalued at its fastest pace since last August, and you know what I wrote about that, the upcoming cataclysmic financial big bang to end all big bangs, uh, because of course the Chinese are going to keep devaluing, and then, you know, it'll be ding-dong, the Fed is dead, when they are forced by collapsing markets uh, to ultimately lower rates to a negative territory and launch QE4. So I think the race out of fiat currencies uh, has begun, uh, and uh, the race into Things that can sit, preserve your value over time, such as gold and silver, and in my opinion, Bitcoin, because we're in a digital world, and I don't think anyone's going to trust any 
I mean, you know, Alan Greenspan could say all he wants about how we should go back to a gold standard. I don't think anyone will ever trust the government to issue anything. I mean, would you trust if the U.S. government said, yeah, we got 88,000 tons of gold. Don't worry. The, gov the money we're printing, we'll, we'll take care of you. No, I don't think that anyone's going to trust anything. They'll trust gold and silver to preserve their value, and they'll seek new monetary methods as we move forward uh, throughout the decade. So in the short term, do you see basically you're saying that the EU, uh, the euro is going to fail do you see that boosting the value of the dollar for the short term, though? Well, I didn't say the euro is going to literally fail right now. I mean, it could take some time. It could even be there could be several. Uh, it could be a new euro. We have, you have different countries that are in it and out of it. Uh, but ultimately, I think that you're not going to even have a euro at all. Uh, and again, you know, you say, well, it boost the dollar. <laughs> that's like that's like you'll get these people out there go, whoa, that means gold will go down. And it's like I wrote an article a few years ago. It said if a nuclear bomb destroyed Europe. Which meant, which was saying, which was mocking these people, saying, "Well, yeah, I mean, if a nuclear bomb destroyed Europe, yeah, the dollar would explode. The dollar index would go to 200, and you'd still have some idiots out there saying, yeah, well, gold's going to go down because the dollar's up. Gold has absolutely everybody. It has absolutely zero, zero correlation to the dollar index. Why anyone would believe that the dollar, that that the gold price." would move because of the, the relationship between the dollar and the euro and the dollar and the yen. Two currencies, the first one, which literally won't even be around soon, which is the equivalent of a nuclear bomb destroying Europe, and the second one, which is purposely trying to destroy itself. So, no. Uh, yes, it will boost the dollar. As I've said along, we're the most liquid currency in the world. Throughout any of these crises, money flows into liquidity, not because the dollar is so great or we're such a great country with a great economy and a great military. It's just the most liquid. And that all that does is foster currency crises around the world. And ultimately, who bails them out? The Fed, with more money printing, until eventually the Fed, which is at the top of the totem pole, uh, destroys itself with hyperinflation. And, you know, I hope we I hope some something arrests this process before it ends with a worst case scenario. But that worst case scenario is played out throughout history. And uh, the laws of math say there's really no other way out of it. So I, um, I think that the, the, uh, the euro, the whole Brexit is simply going to accelerate the breakup of, of the European Union. I can't say how fast it will break up and how fast the euro will break up, but it, it's not going to be years and years time. I mean, we, it took us only 15 years to get to this point of destruction. It's not going to take us 15 years to get rid of it. I mean, for all I know, it could be within a year's time we have new currencies in Europe. I don't know, but I do know that the race is on to get out of fiat currencies. And in the short term, do you see Brexit affecting the UK economy negatively? Uh, yes. I mean, why? I see it affecting everything effectively, um, uh, immediately. I mean, Europe, uh, look, we were already we were already at the worst global economy. I mean, I wrote this back in October of last year. I wrote an article called The Worst Global Economy of Our Lifetime. That was back in October. Those were gr good old times compared to where the world has been uh, in, in recent months, including the U.S., which is you know, even by its own statistical chicanery on the verge of recession. I mean, of course, it's in a recession, uh, but we're at the worst. Everyone's at the worst right now. Look at Japan, all these and China. They're having double digit drops in imports and exports. Uh, commodities have collapsed. I mean, this is uh, copper is basically at its uh, lows going all the way back to the crisis. So that's where we were before the Brexit. Now that we have the Brexit, I mean, European trade, which was already, you know, down to nothing, is going to literally ground to a halt. I mean, between just just the chaos of figuring out what's going on, it's going to be almost like a, a post 9-11 deer in the headlights throughout most of Europe. Certainly in the UK. I mean, God, not only did the UK get kicked out of the euro, they lost to Iceland in soccer, uh, England yesterday. So, I mean, the people there are going to be just sitting on their hands trying to figure out what's going on next. They just watched their currency fall 15 freaking percent in two days. 15 percent is a first world country uh, over there. So, of course, it's going to ground European trade to a halt. Europe, Europe is pretty much the biggest trade block in the world. So, you know, how do you think it's going to affect everyone else? So, I, I mean, I don't think there's a chance in hell that even the best BLS and BEA and, uh, and other uh, you know, accounting chicanery is going to prevent the U.S. from printing recessions in the second half of this year, uh, a la 2008 and 2009. So, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's only a matter of time before the Fed is forced uh, to, to go to negative interest rates in QE4, and that will truly be the end game uh, for all central banking. All right. Well, Andy Hoffman, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, um, are there any last thoughts you'd like to add, and where can our viewers find you online? 
Yeah, the last thoughts. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think anyone has been more vocal about these things forever. So I have no last thoughts other than to protect yourself and do it now. And again, Miles Franklin, we've been around for 27 years, A plus Better Business Bureau rating. By the way, we're in the only state, Minnesota, that actually regulates bullion dealers, which is a pretty, a pretty important thing, given that some of the uh, online bullion dealers have gone bankrupt with, with people's funds in the last year. Uh, in the last two or three years, actually. Uh, I write every day at, at milesfranklin.com. You can email me at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com or you can call us at 800-822-8080. Andy, once again, thank you so much for your time.